fish farmers fertilize fry ponds to increase the amount of suitable natural foods for young fish. Applying fertilizer stimulates the production of organisms that serve as the first foods for many species of fish and increases fry survival and growth. Fertilization also causes the water to develop a bloom, a turbid green to brown color caused by microscopic organisms called phytoplankton and zooplankton. For the culture of yellow perch fry in ponds, zooplankton management is essential to provide a consistent food supply. However, Optimum fertilization methods can vary depending on water quality and location. Soil and water characteristics profoundly influence fertilizer requirements and responses. Check the water supply for new ponds before fertilizing. The source of the water is important. Well water can be lower in nutrients than surface water, while surface water will need to be filtered to remove existing invertebrate predators. The quality of the water is important as well. One important parameter of the water is the alkalinity. Alkalinity represents the buffering capacity of the water which stabilizes pH and facilitates the uptake of nutrients by phytoplankton. Fertilizers may be either inorganic or organic based. There is little research-based information available to determine which performs best. In fact, a combination of the two is often used. Typically, Availability, ease of application, and cost are the most important factors in selecting fertilizers. Inorganic fertilizers are those that take the form of granular or liquid fertilizers, having a high phosphorus content and to a smaller degree nitrogen. Nitrogen is often, but not always, the limiting nutrient in fresh water in the Midwest. The premise behind using inorganic fertilizers is that by applying needed nutrients, phytoplankton populations rapidly increase. These increased populations of phytoplankton, often called a bloom, will then increase the number of zooplankton in the pond, which eat the phytoplankton. Organic fertilizers are often used to directly promote desirable zooplankton species. Organic fertilizers may be animal manures, ground or meal alfalfa hay, or soybean meal. Zooplankton important to larval fish are classified as either rotifers, cladocerans, water fleas, or copepods. Given the small size of yellow perch fry, they first need to consume rotifers and then cladocerans and copepods as they grow larger. Pond fertilization needs to begin approximately 10 to 12 days prior to fry stocking. At the OSU facility, we begin to fill the ponds with water when the egg ribbons are laid approximately 10 days before stocking of fry. Pond fertilization begins with aged horse manure, a form of organic fertilizer applied to each pond. Do not use fresh manure as it may be a source of ammonia. Water is added slowly to the pond. In our case, we use 800 pounds of manure per surface acre. Once the pond is full, alfalfa meal or soybean meal, if nitrogen is limiting, can be applied at 400 pounds per acre. Alfalfa meal is applied around the edge of the pond in the shallow water. Your arm can be used to monitor the success of your fertilization efforts. An easy method is to stick your arm down in the pond to your elbow, and when you roll your fingers back up, you should just be able to see your fingernails. If the water is clear, fertilize two to three times per week until you can no longer see your nails. Once you no longer see your fingernails, stop fertilizing until you see your nails again. Fry continue to consume zooplankton for four to eight weeks before they are ready to be feed trained or converted to a commercial diet. Fertilizing fry ponds is an art and a science. Be sure to keep written records of what you do every year. This should include water temperatures and dissolved oxygen levels and amounts and types of fertilizer used. While it can change from pond to pond or year to year, you may see a pattern develop. 